Hey there, this is Bill Reichart from WDR Photography and this is another one of uh, my Photoshop tutorials and this is an image that I did of um, Marlene in Charlotte, North Carolina excuse me and um, really fun to work with and uh, it's another one of these images that I've done that um, there's stuff kind of floating around and it's really just a, a straightforward collage technique in Photoshop. I've had a lot of people ask how this image was shot and so I'm going to talk a little bit how it's been put together. Now this image is already finished so I'm not going to start from scratch so what we're going to do is we're going to dissect it a little bit and talk about how it was put together and that'll save a lot of time too because this usually takes three or four hours to put together um, so let's get started and this is the finished image and I'm gonna reduce it down to where we started in the very beginning and this was in my hotel room when I was on a trip up to Charlotte and you can see it's pretty horrendous and what we did was we shot five or six photographs and I'm going to show you those right now and this obviously is the empty corner so we have five or six photos let's look at this one here's Marlene sitting on the ottoman and we shot probably 20 different shots of positions it's not a very good exposure um, and uh, and we kind of tied some strings to her dress to kind of pull it up I'm going to try and show that to you here. I don't know if you can see it at this resolution. Um, and so that's what we did. We shot that. This was the most interesting pose, so that's the one we went with. And then my assistant, Andy, was with us. So we started playing with the furniture in the room. And we shot a picture, and Andy's trying to keep his hands uh, from blocking anything that might look like it's floating around. So we shot the chair on its own kind of up on one leg and then we shot the lamp on its own and had to leave it plugged in so that it was on. You can see he's holding it very carefully so we can cut out around it and then we shot the nightstand and he was just standing there tilting it up on its end and we shot um, a book, The Wizard of Oz, which was Marlene's favorite book and she wanted to somehow include it. And that also explains a little bit of why, she, why she's dressed the way she's dressed. So anyway, those were our base images that we used. I'm going to find uh, back to where we were here. And all we did really was take components of each of those images and cu cut them out and drop them in to this image and so we'll start with the chair at the chair here and here you can see um, where we had uh, some of the background from the original shot you can see Andy's hands down here and then using layer masking um, we're just going to cut that out and I've already gone over layer masking in some previous tutorials so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing that here you can see I have uh, the layer mask disabled so I'm just going to simply enable it by right clicking saying enable layer mask and so now we have a nice cutout of the chair and then we're going to do that for every element um, in the shot so here we have the nightstand once again. Um, I've just disabled the layer mask and I'm going to right click and then enable it. And so it's got a nice cutout. Um, we've got the lamp, which I made much smaller because it simply didn't fit in the shot. Um, enable the layer mask for that so it's a clean cut. And then we have Marlene herself. And you can see where it looks a little bit a little bit weird around her hair. And what I generally will do when I'm um, cutting out somebody who has a little bit of hair flying around is that I'll use the extract tool in Photoshop just to get around the hair 
and then I will uh, mask out the rest by hand using the eraser tool. And so we'll enable her layer mask. A nice cutout there. And then we have the book. And we'll do the same thing. So now we have the general composition for the whole thing and then we just start going into each layer and tweaking it. And we'll start with Marlene herself. And what I've done is I've added a levels layer mask because this was horribly exposed or underexposed rather. And so we just added a layer mask right here. I'm sorry, not a layer mask, a levels adjustment layer um, just to brighten her up. And then we have a couple other uh, levels and hue saturation layers um, just to do some tweaking. And one of those things, this is a levels layer that is set to luminosity. Um, and that is just adding the shadow uh, from where the book would be casting a shadow on her dress. So that's all that does. And then one of the things, because we shot her so close to the floor, is that her leg, the underside of her leg, is reflecting brown from the carpet. And that wouldn't be natural if she's floating up kind of above a blue chair. So to give it a little bit more believability, we added a hue saturation um, adjustment mask and then painted a mask so it only affected the area around her leg. And what I'll do is I'll disable that layer mask just temporarily. And you can see it, it because it's linked into her layer, it makes all of her blue. So that if we double click that, we can see that we just shifted it so that it's blue. Um, and then what I did was just paint the layer mask so it's only affecting the underside of her leg. And so now you can see there's just a little bit of blue along the edge of her leg that makes it a little bit more believable. So then the book, which is um, was also not properly exposed. Um, if we look at it, really wanted to make it clear that it was the Wizard of Oz more than just being able to tell that there's a lion and the Tin Man and all that. So um, I took a cover from another story and laid it on top and then added just a little bit of glare to the whole thing just to make it a little bit more believable so that now you can at least somewhat read that it says the wonderful Wizard of Oz. So that's the, that's the book. Um, and then the chair, uh, obviously if she was floating above it and the light is coming from her right side, she's going to be casting some shadows in the chair. So we added a levels layer here and link, oh, hold on, and linked it into the chair layer and if we turn that on we can see how it by painting the layer mask we've had it cast a shadow just kind of around where she would be casting a shadow on that chair if she was actually floating on it. If I, if I turn her off you can see how that's affecting the, the chair. It's just darkening it where it is. We double click that we can look and see that we've just changed the, the mid-tones to be darker. So there, now you, you can start to see how it's kind of coming together a little bit. And then on the nightstand, we did kind of the same thing. The, the chair, just like Marlene cast a shadow on the chair, the chair would be casting a shadow across the floor, which we'll get to in a minute, and also would be casting a shadow on the nightstand. So we've added just a little, little bit of darkness to the nightstand. Um, and then, on top of that, uh, another element that we added in that I'll just throw in here real quick, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it, but 
we, we covered up the horrible picture on the wall with another shot of Marlene and I just made it relate to her a little bit more too um, and then what we're going to look at is now the chair has got to be casting shadows on the floor obviously so we just added a bunch of um, levels adjustment layers and a couple of them will show the shadows on the floor so that's this one will give us just a general shadow for the chair and then we've added in this one to add a shadow for the leg that's closest to the floor so it's like a secondary shadow one is kind of the ambient shadow and then one is kind of um, the shadow of the leg, the more direct shadow and then the lamp which was one of the more complicated things to add in because the lamp is on as you can tell and it's somewhat close to the wall and it's getting the same light as everything else in the picture so it would be casting a shadow on the wall but would also be casting its own light on the wall so first we put in a shadow and I'm going to disable the layer mask on this so you can see that um, we just basically took the lamp shape duplicated it, made it black, blurred it, and then stretched it out a little bit because the shadow wouldn't the shadow would be further away where the lamp is further away from the wall and then we just adjusted the opacity to around I think it was 22 percent and then the shadow would also not be as harsh on the part um, that is furthest from the object that's casting it. So we painted a layer mask uh, to, to make the shadow fade. So you can see the shadow is stronger where the lamp is closer to the wall and not as strong where it's further away from the wall. And then we needed to add, um, and this was a shadow that we added uh, to the wall for the nightstand a little bit of depth back there and then for the light that the lamp is casting against the wall the lamp is obviously going to be casting light up and down through the holes in the lamp shade so we've added a, a layer adjustment layer um, that adjusts the levels on the lighter side and so we can look at that we brought it in just a little bit lighter and um, if we disable the layer mask for that, you see it adjusted the whole thing and we painted the layer mask just for the shapes as if it was casting this round light that would come out of the out of the top and the bottom of the lampshade. And then it would also be casting some ambient light through the lampshade. And so we added just a little bit of that behind the lamp. And this is all happening behind the lamp. So if we turn the lamp off, you can see how it's casting the light against the wall. And then, um, just in general, the room was just a little bit too bright, I felt like. So we added another levels le uh, adjustment layer and masked it out just to kind of do a little bit of vignetting around the uh, edge of the room and then in general I didn't like the um, tone of the shot so we just adjusted the the curves a little bit to make it a little bit more blue than brown so I gave it a little bit of a nicer feel and so we did all of that in one layer group and then we duplicated that group and mashed all the layers together um, into this layer and started duplicating that and what you do at, at this point is that you start really uh, treating it like you took the photo this way you do all your editing um, and, uh, and really just edit it like you would edit, it, edit a photo that you took um, and then what we did was just start turning these things on. 
and then what we did was we just kind of started adding layers um, that would do different things. Like I wanted to just blur the edges a little bit. So I'm going to disable this layer mask so you can see the whole thing. Um, we just blurred the entire layer and then I really just wanted to blur it at the edges. So um, now you can see that just like around her foot is a little blurry and around this edge of the photo is a little bit blurry. You can also kind of fake depth of field a little bit that way sometimes or enhance depth of field you've already shot. Um, and then I just wanted to add a little bit of uh, a little bit of glow around the image and I covered how to do that in a previous um, tutorial and then wanted to add some more vignetting just to add some more depth to the photo still and you can these other adjustment layers are hue saturation adjustment layers just to take out some of uh, the color that might oversaturate the image we added one final hue saturation just to tweak it and then I wanted to bring out her face just a little bit more because it got kind of lost in the background a little bit so we added um, a levels adjustment layer just to bring it out a little bit and I'm going to disable that so you can see it adjusts the whole image and then we paint the layer mask um, just to lighten it around her face and that is the finished image so I hope you get something out of this and I hope you go out and make your own collages and make stuff fly around the room. Until next time, see ya.